Hey everyone, welcome back to Pokemon Reborn. So, it's been a while. You know, after three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back episodes, we're finally going to move on with the story again. And I figure since it's been a while since we actually messed around with the story, I would recap on what happened last. So what happened last was we beat Seal, we flew back to Horn City, we talked to Ame, and she told us to find three people. Adrian, TJ Arclight, and Victoria. So that's actually what we need to do, but I also need to give a team update. So this is actually my current team right now. So you know most of these members, you know the Infernape, the IC, the Alolan Ninetales, and my Gigalith and my Roserade. But I added a Star Raptor and an Excadrill. And these two are going to help out quite a bit. So, I finally started using Excadrill because Excadrill is available at this point. You can find one by going to the Hidden Cove. And when you surf on the lake, if you go towards the right side, there's a cave. You can find Drillbur. I think you can also find fully evolved Ex Excadrill inside of there as well. And you could always find Star Raptor. You could find them on Route 3. It's a bit of a rare find. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over the sets here. So I have Life Orb on my Star Raptor. I also have Reckless, which means if I have recoil moves like Double Edge and Brave Bird, they will deal more damage. I also have Close Combat and Final Gambit in case I need either of those. The Excadrill over here has Sword Stance, Iron Head, Rock Slide, and Earthquake. I couldn't really think of a good item to stuff on it, so I added a King's Rock to it. So Iron Head has even more of a chance of flinching. If you're curious how to get Iron Head on your Excadrill, it is the new move tutor that you'll find in 7th Street. To get that move tutor, you have to buy out the stolen Pokemon shop because the move tutor itself is the man who ran the shop. And for the most part, everybody else here stayed the same. Roserade now has Protect over Growth because I'm not going to be ever... I'm just not going to be setting up on my Roserade ever again. So I might as well try to Toxic Leech Seed stall things out with it, if at all possible. Anyways, after all of that, it's time to go and look for those people. And DJ Arclight is the first we're going to grab. He's up over here. By his club, of course. And after DJ Arclight, we want to fly, and we want to fly to the Coral Ward, which is where we should find Adrian, over here. And again, after plenty of text over here, he should be on his way. We can also finally grab this fairy gem that's right here. And the final person is Victoria, and we actually already saw her. So Victoria is over in the Barrel Cemetery, and we had a glimpse of her while we were doing side quests. We didn't talk to her at all. But we can come over here, we can talk to her, and she will finally just tell us to move on. So now that we've collected everybody, we can come inside here. We can come all the way back to the back, talk to Ame. Victoria will be here once again, and we can move on. Basically, we need to head to the underground rail net once more. So I'm going to be starting here at the Pokemon Center in the Obsidian Ward, and we're going to come down here and enter the rail net from this side. So we're basically going to be going towards the area where you would find the... It was somebody's boyfriend, and he fell down through the cracks in the city, and you'll actually find him in there. You cannot find him in here anymore. And we'll also encounter an Absol telling us that disaster is going to happen. But normally you would find him if you broke this rock right here. And you would find him over here in this corner. If you didn't do that earlier, then it's gone. The offense over. You can't complete that at the moment. But we're supposed to be over here at this set of stairs. So DJ Arclight will ask us if we're ready, and of course we are. So as soon as we come up here, we're going to be thrown into a double battle with Victoria. After this, everybody should be on their merry way once more. You might notice that there is an item over there in the right-hand corner. Don't worry about it, we can't quite get to it yet. So after a bit more chat over here, 
we'll be able to come out over here into this room. You actually want to step onto this glowing spot and you will find a receiver. You'll also notice that we are in front of the Devoncourt building right here and I didn't need to use that. It's fine. So we want to come up over here and we will be faced with sort of a puzzle floor. And somehow Arclight is going to trap himself over there. So I actually have the solutions to all the puzzles in the description below. You want to use your A key to change where the dark spots on the puzzle, or on the floor, actually are. And those are the only spots that are safe for you to walk on. You also want to keep in mind, you might want to slow down so you don't actually walk onto the light spots. If you do, your whole party will receive a bit of electric type damage, which means if you have a ground type in your party, then it's not going to take any damage at all. So here should be another double battle. After that battle, we will be faced with another puzzle, which is pretty much the same as the last one, it's just a little bit bigger. So again, I have my speed up off, just so I don't make any sort of mistakes here. And the solution will also be in the description for this one as well. Alright, I messed up there. Don't hold that one against me. And once we reach the other side, Victoria will magically appear somehow beside us, and we will have another double battle. And after that battle, we'll get to see Victoria actually knock out that orderly. And we will have another cutscene where we basically get separated from Victoria. So now we are finally on our own, and we are faced with another puzzle right here. And again, hopefully I don't make any mistakes right here. This one is kind of weird because it sort of loops around a little bit, but right over here we will actually have our first battle on our own. With that battle out of the way, we can finally continue. We're almost done with all the grindy battles that we have coming up ahead of us right now. But again, like I said, this puzzle is very, very long winded. And of course, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to actually make sure that you battle all the trainers in here. And here is the last trainer battle that we have coming up ahead of us. With that trainer out of the way, we can finally move on up here. And once we step over here, we will get a bit of a teasing view of a few items in ATM. And we will awake to find ourselves in this room. Here you can access your PC, or you can heal up, and once you enter this room and enter this cage, you will be trapped. So, right now, you kind of want to get your team settled and ready for the upcoming boss battle. Once you enter this little cage right here, you won't be able to change your team at all. I have my team all ready to go right here, so I'm going to go ahead and get myself locked up. Victoria, too, is going to go ahead and get herself locked up, and we're going to have to battle. So all the battles here are going to be on a factory field or on a short circuit field, assuming you destroy the field or you turn it off or whatever. So right here, Victoria is going to start off with her Mian Chao. It has Regenerator for an ability. It has a Life Orb for an item, Knock Off, High Jump Kick, U-Turn, and Fake Out. So I'm going to try and get my Stealth Rocks out right here. I may or may not get them. Sometimes she just High Jump Kicks my Gigolith right here and knocks it out. And sometimes she knocks off on it.
So now that that's taken care of, I can go ahead and send out my Excadrill. I think she's going to knock it off too. So I'm going to lose my King's Rock, and that kind of hurt. So my Excadrill actually has the Sand Rush ability, which means its speed is doubled. So I should outspeed this, but it's pretty much. Some people might tell you to bring Mold Breaker, and it does have its uses, you know, it's just kind of up to you. The next Pokemon that she sends out is her Togekiss. It has Serene Grace, King's Rock, Dazzling Gleam, Air Slash, Horse Spear, and Nasty Plot. And I'm just going to go ahead and Iron Head this and knock it out. The next Pokemon that she sends out is going to be her Golade. Usually I send out my Star Raptor on this one. As justified for an ability, it has a Salak Berry, which is a Pinch Berry. So when the Glade's health would drop to red, the Salak Berry would activate, and it will give it a sharp boost in speed. The Glade also has Throw Chops and Headbutt, Sword Stance, and Close Combat. Actually, a correction right there, it's not sharply, it's just one stage. But anyways, the Glade is going to go ahead and Sword Stance on me, and I'm just going to Brave Bird right there, knock it out. And I also forgot to mention that the Glade's moveset was Throat Chop, Zen Headbutt, Sword Stance, and Close Combat. Anyways, the next Pokemon to come out should be the Raichu right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and send out my Excadrill right here. It's going to get a special defense boost right there, and it's going to float, so I can't knock it out with my Earthquake. And that's kind of one of the reasons that I don't use Mold Breaker here, is because Mold Breaker doesn't actually work right there. Mold Breaker only ignores abilities, and this is not an ability. The boost that it receives right here is pretty much similar to what would happen if you use the move Magnetic Flux, I think. But she should outspeed me right there. She can't do anything to me, and I'm just going to hit her with a Rock Slide. And then I think I'm going to switch out here. I don't want to get rid of my Excadrill just yet, just in case I might need it later. Or actually, that doesn't work out, because I have to get rid of somebody at some point. I'm just actually really shocked that the Raichu outsped me, even with sand up. But it's fine, I can bring the sand back and I can slowly start to wear down that Raichu. So there should be one more turn of sand hitting it, and I can just send out my Infernape right here and mock Punch it to death. So next up is going to be her Lucario. So this Lucario is actually a special attacking Lucario. It has the ability Justified, it's holding the wise classes, it has Aura Spear, Flash Cannon, Calm Mind, and Shadow Ball. So it's going to actually hit me with an Aura Spear. It should knock me out. Or, oh, no, I'm fine. I already play tested this battle, but... Um, a lot of times these battles don't go the same way as before, even if you test them out earlier. So finally is going to be the Incineroar, it's going to have Intimidate for an ability, it's going to have the Assault Vest, as Earthquake, Knockoff, Flare Blitz, and Outrage. So I need to switch something out to get rid of that attack drop right there. rate is pretty much as good as gone right here, so it doesn't matter what I do. I can just go ahead and Toxic the Incineroar and make sure that regardless of what happens, it will go down. But I should be able to just close combat it with my Infernape right here and knock it out. And that's the Victoria battle.
So before you go back out there and go up those stairs, you might want to go in here and heal up just really quickly. So after a short bit of text right there, we will emerge out here and we will have a new puzzle to deal with. So, we can still change the tiles, but there's no way of knowing what to change the tiles to, except I did go into the PBS files and I did dig out some maps. So, in the description below, I will have a few images that'll tell you what color to change these tiles to. So first off, I'm going to change the direction of... I'm not sure what they are. Movement panels, I guess. And I do want that panel to be blue. I'll come over here and change the direction of that. And then the only way to get back over there is to go down here. So I need to change the panel to red. Change this again, and we can move on over. This should be red, and... We need to change it to blue in order to avoid getting shocked next. So from here, it's a little bit tricky. We're not going to go for that heal up. That's why I told you to go back into the PC and healing machine room and just heal up. Because we're not going to bother with that. So first, we need to change it to yellow, then red. And right here is where we need to go up. We need to change it back to yellow and go up again, and we will reach the side that has the control panel. From here, we need to change the colors back, the tiles back to red, back to yellow, back to red, back to yellow, and then to blue. Over here, we want to change this little, this machine downward, and then I believe we need to change it back to yellow. And we've made it all the way over here. So again, we also need to change these tiles. The starting tile should be yellow, and then we need to change it to blue. Change it to yellow, and now we will emerge on a red panel this time. I believe we want to change it to blue this time. And now we need to change it back to red. The PBS file didn't actually have this tile that's right above me on the map, so I actually had to insert it in. It was a bit confusing at first. So next we basically need to kind of repeat the process and I made a mistake. But we're almost done, so right here I need to change it back to yellow. And then I need to change this back to blue. To red, and then to yellow, and we are out of here. So I would save right about here. And then I would go ahead and order your team right here. So once you're ready, go ahead and go get locked into the cage, and we will find ourselves across from DJ Arclight. And we will actually have a choice. Except not really. If you refuse, he will just battle you anyways. So most of DJ Arclight's team is Electrotypes. So again, Excadrill does really, really well here. I'm going to go ahead and set up Stealth Rock right here, and usually he either sets up... Oh, he actually took me out with a crit. It's fine. But he's going to start off with his Luxray, and it has Intimidate, it has the Amplified Rock, it has Electric Terrain, All Charge, Super Power, and Throat Chop. So I outspeed this thing right now, and I can just go for an Earthquake and knock it out. Just like that. Next up is going to be his Noivern. And usually I switch out on this thing. Noivern is the only thing that really bothers my Excadrill. So I'm going to go ahead and send in my Star Raptor right here. 
The Noivern has the ability Infiltrator, it has the Wide Lens, it has Dragon Pulse, Boom Burst, Hurricane, and Heat Wave. And that Heat Wave usually does a good chunk to my Excadrill, so I don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to go ahead and use Brave Bird on it and see how much I can do. If I can get through the confusion. Oh, that's pretty close. I could actually sell that out, or I could just send in my grenade and just mock punch this out. Next up is going to be his Raichu. It has Lightning Rod for an ability, it has the Wide Wise Glasses, it has Focus Blast, Thunderbolt, Pinned Power Ice, and Nasty Plot. Again, I can just Earthquake this and knock it out just like that. After that, it is his X Cloud, it has Soundproof, it has a Citrus Berry, it has Boom Burst, Ice Beam, Earthquake, and Surf. So for this, I usually just go ahead and Iron Head it, see if I can get a flinch right here. Unfortunately, I didn't. I should be able to knock it out still, though. Oh, that was so close. And I live on just barely 1 HP. Probably shouldn't have been so risky with that, but it's completely fine. So after that, he's going to send out his Jolteon as Volt Absorb. It has a Pattaya Berry, which is another Pinch Berry. Basically, it raises Special Attack in a Pinch. It has Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, Hidden Power Ice again, and Discharge. So I should be able to just Earthquake this and get it out of here. And last up is going to be his Ampharos which is usually a bit of a problem Pokemon. The sand is up, so I'm going to have to deal with this. This is a Mega Ampharos. It means the ability is going to be Mold Breaker. It's holding the Mega Stone, obviously. It has Discharge, Zap Cannon, Dragon Pulse, and Agility. If you let this thing set up, it can be really, really annoying. I'm faster than it, however, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with a Blizzard. and just kind of see how much I can do right there. And that is DJ Arclight right there. After this battle, he will drop below the floor and... well, we're gonna see what happens to him later. So once we come out over here, we're going to be faced with another puzzle. So the directions for this room is going to be in the description below. It's just going to be another map, and every panel will have the proper color that you're supposed to change it to. Hopefully, I don't make a complete mess of this. So the starting panel should be yellow. We want to change this one to blue. The next one should be red, and the panel that we arrive on should be blue. And using this control panel down here, we can change the directions of the moving tiles. We want to change the panel back to red and move here. We want to change that panel to yellow in the one we arrive on to blue. And then we have to cycle on back over there. Which could be kind of annoying. After that we want to change the panel we arrive on to red and the next panel that we arrive on to yellow. So instead of going down south, which is what we should do for the puzzle, I want to go over here, change the panels to red, and then come over here. And I want to grab the pulse readout for the next pulse that we're going to take on. Next I want to change the panel back to blue. Because we grab this item, we're going to have to sort of reset the puzzle a bit. And we're going to have to cycle through that a little bit more. But after that, we can now head onward with this puzzle again. So I want to change this panel to red, go through there. I want to change this back to blue, change this back to red. Or I was supposed to, but I made a mistake. Rip. So from here, I want to change the panel to yellow. 
I want to change the next panel to blue. And change the next panel to red. And next panel to blue again. And then the next panel to yellow. So when we leave this little mechanism that spins you around, we're going to be on a blue panel, I believe. And the next panel should be yellow again. And once more, we have to cycle through everything. my mistake. I thought I moved. Sometimes my keys don't actually move when I'm supposed to. But we're heading back over this way and we should be able to reach the control panel this time. So we need to change the panels to yellow right here and once we move over here we can change the directions of those controls over there. So we'll have to cycle on back all the way over there again which is kind of annoying but I feel like you should be used to it by now unfortunately a lot of this puzzle is just really really repetitive And from here, we can straight on jump to this panel right here, safely I might add, and we can finally reach this panel that's all the way back here, turn it on, and we can leave this area. So I need to turn this into blue, turn the next one into red, and then we can move on over. And I moved too soon. So from here we can move on down over here, we can access this panel that's right here, and we can enter the next room for a nice little cutscene. I say nice, but this is basically the most gruesome cutscene in the game so far. Lynn will actually let us leave here. You can go over and examine her if you want, but I don't recommend doing that. And we will once more be in another puzzle room. I actually like the puzzle that's in this room. So I want to turn this panel into blue. Turn the next into red. And then I want to go right over here. Turn this one into yellow. Turn the next one blue. Oh, I thought I moved. Turn the next one red, and then turn the next one yellow. In doing so, we can change the direction of those tiles down there. Blue, red, and then we can get off right there. Down here, we will actually have a healing shard, which is kind of why I wasn't too terribly worried about losing my Pokemon right there. But from here on out, you want to be very careful because there are no more healing shards. So this is kind of the fun part. You want to change the direction of those tiles over there, change the direction of those tiles over there. And then I want to move down and change the direction back here. And after doing this a few times, we will end up over here. I think you can see what I mean by this is kind of fun. A 
only a little bit, but once you get to the end, it's kind of fun in my opinion because you just get to see your character going through all of these like really, really quickly. And I should have turned that panel blue. That was kind of my mistake right there. So once again, we will go through all of these one more time. Just to end up on this panel and we will enter here. We will change the direction of the tiles right there so we can move on over here and change the direction of the tiles over here. The panel should be blue and we're good to go. So I recommend you save right before you enter here and reorder your party. Alright, so once you've saved, you've healed up if you needed to, and you've reordered your party, you can go ahead and enter this room. We'll find Zell in here, and you can answer whatever you'd like. You still have to battle them. They're going to start off with a Aurorus. It has Snow Warning, it has Focus Sash, it has Flash Cannon, Stealth Rock, Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt. So this is one of the reasons I like Gigalith as my Sand Setter, because it's slower than this Aurora, so that means my sand is going to stay up. I'm going to go ahead and switch out my Gigalith right here for my Roserade. It's not going to be too useful. And I'm just going to get rid of my Roserade right here. Or actually, I think I can pop the Focus Ash. So I'll Toxic the Aurora, and that should pop its Focus Ash. And now I can send out my Excadrill and just knock this right out. If I didn't pop the Focus Ash, I would have had to rely on a flinch. And there is a good chance of that happening, but I don't really want to have to rely on it that much. Next up is going to be the Umbreon. I'm not sure if I want to switch out. I think I'll stay in, actually. So the Umbreon has synchronized, it has the leftovers as Double Team, Wish, Foul Play, and Toxic. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with an Iron Head, see if I can get a flinch right here. It's just going to Foul Play me, which is really, really annoying. So that's unfortunate, I'm going to switch out here. I don't really want to deal with that. I still have my Gigala, so I'm not really worried about changing the weather a little bit. And right here, I'm just going to hit the Umbreon with a Dazzling Gleam. Umbreon is just so bulky that it's going to take so many hits to wear this thing down. And he's actually going to swap out into his Alakazam, so it's going to take a hit right there. Completely fine. I'm going to go ahead and swap back out into my Gigalith right here. And hopefully I get knocked out. So now I can send in my Excadrill and I should outspeed this Alakazam and just knock it out with Iron Head. And even if he sends in his Umbreon, I could have just knocked it out as well. So next up is the Espeon. It has Magic Bounce, Synthetic Seed. It has Dazzling Gleam, Light Screen, Reflect, and Psy Shock. So it can be really, really annoying to deal with. I should be able to just Iron Head this, but I might... I'm gonna go ahead and use Earthquake right here. I wanna get rid of this field, just to be safe. Next up is the Umbreon again. I should be able to Earthquake it out. Or he can just deal up, that's fine. I could have tried for a flinch right there, but I didn't think I was going to get it. Oh, 
which is perfectly fine with me. So I'm going to go ahead and send out my Alolan Nine Ninetales. This is the last Pokemon that I'm really going to have any use for my Alolan Nine Ninetales on, so I'm going to take out this Umbreon right here. And instead he's going to send out his Glaceon. So this Glaceon has Snow Cloak, it has Blizzard, Shadow Ball, Yawn, and Wish. I'm going to set up an Aurora Veil and maybe lose my Nine Tails right here. Okay, that should be next turn, because the Toxic is racking up. I did get a little bit of chip onto the Glaceon, so I should be able to knock them both out with my Infernape right here. So that's one close combat right there. My Infernape is actually holding the Fist Plate, so between having Stab and having the Fist Plate, it does pretty good damage. So next up is the Pulse Magnezone. So the ability is going to be Levitate no matter what. It has Magnet Bomb, Discharge, Autonomize, and Hidden Power Ice. It's really, really annoying. So the best I can do here is hit it with a close combat and just hope that my Star Raptor can finish this off later. Which it should be able to. But because I have two special defense drops, it's going to knock out... Okay, the Aurora Veil actually saved me. I'm pretty surprised. So I'm not even going to need my Star Raptor for this. And finally, the Umbreon is going to come back out again, and I'm going to have to knock it out. I've heard of people actually having to deal with the Umbreon or whatever is sent out last instead of the Magnezone receiving the Pulse animation, which is kind of funny. So everything is going to go wrong here. That is going to be absolutely destroyed. And then Zell is going to run off on their own. So over here, we can go ahead and change the direction of this. I don't believe we have to worry about changing the tiles anymore because there is no more power. And we want to come over here and... We want to activate this and... We will find our comrades. Who are all in pretty bad shape. And we have finally finally made it out of that dungeon. So that was a bit gruesome. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed. This is not my favorite dungeon of all time. Those puzzles are really, really annoying. Mainly because even if you know what you're doing, it is so easy to step out of place. Either you don't move your character enough forward, or you do move your character a little bit too much forward. It's just a mess. There was also the fact that halfway through recording this, I actually lost power, and I had to kind of start from scratch. But it's all said and done now. So again, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you guys, and I will catch you later.